Saved from the streets, saved from death, my guest had seen it all till a turnaround came. Now he's an instrument in God's hand. Welcome Clement Molumba. Thank you. It's lovely to have you on our show today. Um, tell us, what do you do? I'm an intervention specialist in behavioural unit. So I work with the young people that have been kicked out of mainstream school. Oh, yes. okay. So that's what you do on a day-to-day -day That's what basis. I do on a day-to-day -day right, as a okay. career. Okay. So, um, so what yeah. kind of things do you do with them, just briefly? Like, trying to teach them. Basically, I'm the middleman, I call it. Right, okay. Between the local authority yeah. and the teachers, which is oh, the school, and okay. the parent. So I have okay. to be the one bringing them together. Okay. <laughs> so I have to write, design a program on how to oh. teach these kids. And um, I have to carry assignment to back to the parents on how mm. to um, provide service at home with their kids. Because it's not just the school that has to teach them. The first teaching starts from home yes. anyway. Yeah, but exactly. some of these parents, they're also in special needs, I call them. Mm. So we have, I have to teach the parents and show them a strategy how to deliver a message to their kids also. Mm. So and you feel like supporting the parents? I support the parents as yeah. well. <laughs> and then the local authority, because mm. they're saying, okay, this, we're paying this money for this guy. Let him do what, Let he, needs him do do. what he needs to do. Yeah, so I work with a lot of different schools. Excellent. Mm. It's a good opportunity to be able to express, you know, and help people mm. to get to where they need to get to. Really, they've had challenges. Yes. In in their life. Um, aside from that, what else do you do in terms of ministry with young <clears> men? I just wanted us to explore that a bit. We, we have a um, we have a ministry called Journey of a Lifetime. Oh, and yes, I, like Journey of, I know Journey <laughs> of a Lifetime. Um, Journey of a Lifetime, we're all about impacting generation of, a gener of our, any gen all generation in general. It's not just my generation mm -hmm. or um, my father's generation, all generation. Mm. Because I believe growth comes within um, stage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always come within age, but it comes within stage. Mm. So it's whichever stage you knock at or you, God presents to you, mm. there's growth in that. Mm. So I could be 21 years old. Yeah. Yes, I could yeah. be 21 years old. And someone can be 30 years old, but the 21 years old can be married. And yeah. by the time he reaches 26, he's, he has a child, he has yeah. his mortgage. Yeah. And I can be 35 at that time, I'm still so playing that's, around. That's very true. And, yeah. But then when I finally get married, mm. I sometimes have to listen to what the 21 years old yeah. was saying. Well, he can be 27 <laughs> at that time Which because of the true. stage he's at. Yeah, yeah. So, so is that why you coined, I know you mentioned something about turning boys to men. To men. So the boys could be... A, boy in terms of where they are where they are yes so 35 year old could be still be a boy yes well 25 year old could be a man because yes. he's already started that journey yes um that he's supposed to that's very profound yeah um and i know you said you teach on different you know aspects of life in terms of um relationships um, dealing with everyday <laughs> issues yeah you know i like something you said about making um young men or making men generally um responsible responsible you know, yeah in terms of not just being um baby fathers yeah but actually being fathers, fathers. tell us a bit more about that so it's like as a gen we have so it's journey of a lifetime mm. and underneath the umbrella is brotherhood which mm. is for the men's ministry and on the other side my wife deals with the warrior wives mm. where you have wives that pray serious <laughs> serious prayer you know, if it was, if it, uh, yes, I need to get wife. your wife on the show. Maybe. Oh my day. days! You listen. <laughs> you need to. Okay. Because um, she's a she's a true definition of warrior wife. Oh, you know, she's a true definition of warrior wife. Oh. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be safe. I'll be honest with you, mm. because she used to carry a picture of mine and pray and speak to and non-existent decree. to be who I am today. I need to connect with her. <laughs> I like women like that. So when I used to come and visit oh, her, thought. when I used to come and visit <laughs> her, I'll see my I'll see my picture, a passport picture with um, anointing oil. I said, listen, if this was in Africa, I think this is witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say, this, this is, listen, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I said, this, this thing here, if I was in Africa, I didn't, because I didn't know who Christ was. I was just getting to know her. And then mm. I saw my picture one time, I was like, with oil, I was thinking, oil, oh, my picture. Mm. And sometimes I'd be like, what's that? She said, oh, I was praying on it. I said, nah, this thing here, if you wow. do it in Africa, is, listen, yeah. you've seen Nollywood, but I've been yeah. in Nollywood. There's a difference of watching Nollywood and, and being living in Nollywood. Nollywood. I it's said, true. this is serious. But in all fairness, um, I realised at uh, some stage that whatever she was saying mm. about me, mm. uh, that's what I'll be coming today. Mm. So it's almost like she went ahead of time. Yeah. It's so that's what, she does. Tongue, that's what she does, warrior wise. Mm. But I'll leave her to describe that that's to you another time. On my side now, where you have um, brotherhood, okay. is t 
um, turning boys into men. Mm. Reason being because there's a lot of men don't want to accept a responsibility. Mm. That's the trouble. Mm. You don't want to accept a responsibility. Mm. It's almost like your mother telling you, do you have your uniform ready? When I tell my daughter, do you have your uniform ready? Mm. Have you washed it? Have you done it? Mm. You can't be washing your uniform on Sunday when school's when on, school is on Monday. Yes. You That's have to true. start from Friday, soak mm. it, lick the next day, hand wash it because it's white. Uh, it's yeah. the difference. So when you teach those responsibility to a younger person, yeah. they find it frustrated mm. and annoying. Mm. But they're doing it because they have to it, yes. follow what you said. Mm. They also acknowledge that you're the adult. Yes. But when you're now speaking to an older person, mm. which is, I'm talking about 25 years old, mm. young man mm. on his prime, mm. he's working, mm. he's getting paid more than you. <laughs> well, he's got yeah, yeah. his car's better than your car. <laughs> yeah. It's not like he's breaking down mm. where your car, you have to keep kicking <laughs> it. So how are you gonna now tell him, it's not wise, you mm. know, the car you're driving at the moment, you don't need to drive it. Try mm. and save money. Instead of paying four, five hundred pounds a week, mm. monthly, you can save that save aside us. for a house. Mm. A lot of young men don't want to build for future. They mm. don't want to build. Yeah. They just want to walk into the it's house. Immediate gratification, it's a isn't yes. it? Yeah. That's, that's so that's what it so is. my whole my um the vision what God's giving me mm. is like growth. They're struggling with growth, and growth mm. comes with responsibility. Mm. And because of that, that's where they're not, they lack understanding of what growth is, so mm. they're struggling. So through that, we're teaching them how to be responsible mm. and also accepting responsibility. Yeah, that's where that's the that's problem is, thing. accepting yeah. it. If you don't accept it, you're frustrated. And also, could it be because obviously there's a, um, well, not obviously, could it be because, again, relationship with their fathers, you yes. know, and I know you shared your experience and a bit of your struggle um, <clears throat> with me in terms of, you know, initially with your um, we are dead. Yeah. Um, but before we go into that, let's go back a bit. I know that you've actually been in a refugee camp before mm -hmm. in Belgium. Tell us a bit about that. <clears throat> yeah, so when I arrived um, in Europe in general, mm. um, the first place I landed was um, Belgium. Mm. And there was a lot of different kids from Somalia, um, um, Algeria. There was all different type of mm. mix, you know. Mm. It was quite new to me, mm. you know, um, alone in this you were place. Coming from yeah, Congo. Congo. And yeah, English I took the plane speaking, by myself anyway. Wow. So I speak in English. I'm speaking French, French. and like I said, in, um, English sounded like Chinese or Japanese <laughs> to me. It's almost like when it's first time you look at Chinese takeaway menu, it's yeah. like what was that? Because you don't know it. Mm. You know, it looks upside down. It looks mm. like a bunch of sticks <laughs> mixed mm. together, yeah. and someone actually reads it. Mm. Um, it was like a whole different world to me. So in Belgium, there were some people speak English, but I still mm. didn't know what it was. Mm. Um, so when I was there, there was a lot of kids you have to fight. Mm. You know, there was a lot of kids you have to fight for what's the food, for example. Like for you have to line up in the canteen. Mm. You have someone that's going to come and push mm. you out the way and, and take it, take your food or take more food than you or from yeah. your plate to yeah. their plate. Yeah, well. So it was, yeah. it was constant fight, well, it's, it's constant fight. For fight. Survival, really. fight for survival. Yeah. I just left the place where I've had to fight for survival. Mm. And, and not me directly, because I was young, yeah. you know, but my, grand, my grandparents, which was my grandma, mm. she had to, we had to um, fight for survival, because there was war going on, mm. and we come from a wealthy background. Mm. So they used to, the soldiers used to attack those particular area. Oh. They didn't come directly at my house, yes, but, but they used to come around that area. Mm. Um, but so I left that place. Now I'm in Belgium thinking, I mean, you know, the environment's nice, nice. it's clean, yes. feeling like I'm mm. safe. But then it was totally, completely different. Mm. It didn't matter how clean it looked. There were kids still, there yeah. that comes from worse yeah. background than I'm yeah. going through. Mm. And that's been raped, that's been abused, wow. all type of things. So you have to constant fight mm. for survival. I was there for about six weeks, I think. Mm. And it felt like six months. Wow, it must have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, but then you then got here. And then you saw how that issue with the language barrier is in it. That was, that was the, mm. I thought that was bad. But <laughs> coming to UK now, it's just like, whoa, it's different language. Mm. Different language, completely. And then in a new environment, trying to settle in, trying to understand the culture, trying yeah. to mix and all that. How, how was that for you when you then got it? It was difficult. Um, I, looking back, I think it did knock my confidence down because mm. I was scared. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. scared, and then as a firstborn and mm. a male as well in mm. Africa, mm. you know, there's a difference. I told my wife this: you know, when you're male in here, mm. like you get babied in a way, mm. you um, you're looked after. Mm. But when in Africa, you're a warrior. <laughs> you know, the first male, you're a yeah. warrior. There's no choice. Mm. It's like you've been sent out there to hunt. Mm. 
<laughs> and you got to come back alive. Mm. And when you go and make sure when you come back, there's blood stain. You know, don't just take some any blood stain, pull it. It has to be blood stained so that yeah, there's a scratch that you real hunt. You know, you hunt so it shows the definition of a man. Mm. And so coming in England, it was just like. I was scared, but I couldn't show it to my dad. Mm. That I was scared. That's one. Mm. So there's a bat already did now. You, did you have the conversations with him, though? Nah, no, there's no such thing. Exactly. Really you, was, it's, it's, you don't have conversations. You don't have this kind of conversation. Nah, no, exactly. Uh, not that, that's why I wanted to point it yeah. out. My dad's changed now. My father's yeah. changed now. Oh, but yes, back yes, then, yes, it, there was yes, no conversation. Yes. There was yes. no conversation of, are you afraid or yeah. anything like that. There was no, no conversation. No. It was literally, um, I'm scared. I have to do it by myself. Deal with it. Yeah, mm. I was really scared of failing. Mm. I think I was, failing, I was scared of failing because I was really good at my um, mm. in, in schools back home. And okay. yeah, back home. I also stayed in France for a bit right, with so. my family. So I was good in school with that. Yeah. But coming here, mm. I was fair for failing because mm. I couldn't read or write. Oh, no, I well, couldn't write, right. but I couldn't well, read. Obviously, the, la the language yeah. barrier. Was, was there church in any of this, your journey for you, in terms of what was your background? What was my church? Um, no, your no, relationship? Yeah. no, my no. church. But I was aware of God yeah. because um, my grandma okay. used to um, make us like read the Bibles, mm. but she was Jehovah the Witness. No, oh. my great grand was Jehovah the okay. Witness. Okay. She used to go around and <laughs> give this, give um, them little um, booklet. Oh, yeah, this, this far as that. Yes, yeah, but from my mum's side, my mum was actually a Christian. Okay. So she used to get upset. <laughs> that used okay. to happen, but I didn't know why, okay. you know, um, I was eight, last time I saw my grandma, I was eight, okay. um, but my mum used to take us, you know, um, to church, me okay. and my brother from, which from her partner she's right. with, Right. Okay. Um, I'm the only one from my mum and dad, Right. Okay. so that's a whole awkwardness as well, <laughs> at times, so, but my stepmom used to go to church as well, Okay. but not the way my mum was like serving in church. Mm, mm. So then... When with you trying to acclimatize and everything with where you are, um, then you then got into an area, you know, where there were gangs all over the kind of people <laughs> yeah. in your area. Well, I'm just going to ask you to tell us a bit about that and then we'll take a quick break mm. and we we'll explore that a lot more. <laughs> yeah, um, the gang culture came from the area I was living in mm. at that time, um, in the 90s. Or, early 90s, um, mm. it was really bad. There was a lot of crackhead and junkies mm. around us. You'd be walking around, you see needles on the floor. Mm. You see syringe and people was just injecting themselves. I've seen a, a, a woman injecting herself in a, behind herself, wow. like in the park, children's park, where people play, where children wow. are playing, in the middle of missed children playing and She wasn't diabetic, was she? No, she, no, she wasn't <laughs> diabetic. She was <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Right, okay, we're going to go on a break now and you're mm -hmm. going to tell us more about that, your journey when you were um, much younger. Um, please stay tuned, we'll be back in a few minutes. 